how the other side lives. <laughs> this is a really fancy place. Uh, we have, uh, yes, uh, this, I don't think I've ever, Sal, have you ever been to a democratic gathering like this? I want to come back here. <laughs> In any event, uh, I'm, I'm just so proud to see all of you here because um, many of you I've known for a long time and great to see new friends as well. The Muslim community here in New York City continues to grow like leaps and bounds. And more importantly, uh, the community is really exercising its rights to voice opinions and to shape public policy. And that's precisely what we need here in New York City. It's a democratic town, or we like to believe it is, and therefore the policies have to be shaped by the voters. And we see a growing number of Democratic voters, of voters in the Muslim community, in every single borough of this city. And I'm just proud to really be here for the kickoff of what is sure to be a force to be reckoned with, the Muslim Democratic Club of New York. And I think more than any other community, the Muslim community has some very severe challenges and important issues that the city has to deal with. We have ongoing issues of surveillance of people just because of their religious faith. That's not right, and we should put an end to that. Kids and families have to choose between going to school and observing important holidays in the Muslim faith. That has to change also. And we've, we've got masjids all across the city that are constantly being harassed by the Department of Buildings, the Department of Finance, because they, don't, they somehow don't recognize that a masjid is actually a house of worship. We've got to change that as well. important that the Muslim community take a very strong voice and a very active participation in our democracy. I believe our democracy works. It's not necessarily the most perfect one, but I think it's better than any democracy out there in the world. And so let's use uh, the power of the vote to shape policies that affect our families, that affect our communities, and no place better to do it than right here in New York City. Isn't that right? So now I just want to say thank you to our organizers. Uh, they are everywhere, and it's no surprise that uh, I see them organizing this club. We have Faisal Ali. Yeah. Ali Alati. Two more time. Zeba yeah. Iqbal. And New York One personality, Linda Sarsour. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've got a lot of work to do. It's a big election this year. We're going to get revved up. We're going to get out there and fight for our candidates. I hope to be one of those candidates that you're fighting for. And this, I think it's going to be a lot of fun along the way. And at the end of the day, democracy works. We're going to make the changes that are needed in this city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, I'm Sal Albanese, uh, candidate for mayor. I want to thank uh, you for inviting me, especially Linda and Visa, who are from my area of Brooklyn, where we have an emerging, emerging uh, Muslim community. Um, and I want to congratulate all of you for, for organizing this Democratic Club. It's, it's tremendous to see. Um, to see all of you here, and also the venue, as John pointed out, is superb. Um, and uh, uh, New York City has always been a city where different groups come and emerge and, and, and get involved. And uh, um, I came here as an immigrant from, from Italy, and I know what it feels like to be an outsider. And, and then, of course, uh, um, one of the great things about New York is that it welcomes, it welcomes um, uh, new new groups and, and uh, there's no better way to get involved than in politics because politics is a an arena where you can actually make a difference in people's lives. So uh, um, I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm looking forward to uh, 
um, to this campaign for mayor, and uh, one of the things I talk about all the time is making sure that we include the entire city in our in our mosaic, our grand mosaic, and our fabric. So, uh, thank you for inviting me. I look forward to working with you going forward. Thanks thank again. Um, Bob Jackson, um, who's running for Manhattan Borough President. Well, thank you. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters. I'm so happy to be here at the inauguration of the first Muslim Democratic Club of New York. It's about time. And in fact, uh, I am the only Muslim in the City Council of New York. Uh, and I don't know, am I the only Muslim in the entire state of New York as far as state legislature? No. Okay. But um, I'm so happy to be here. In fact, I paid my dues right away. Boom. Uh, because, in fact, you're not a member until you pay your dues. That's right. Uh, and that's very, very important. And the dues for everybody is at least $25. So if you haven't paid your dues, please pay your dues. Let me just say that I am a lifelong Democrat. I've been a Democrat ever since I turned 18 years of age, which was many, many years ago. Um, and I was the president of the Concerned Democratic Coalition of Northern Manhattan, a Democratic club. And when you're involved in the Democratic Party, then you really get involved in the party. You know the rules and regulations of the game. And in fact, I just came from the New York County Democratic uh, Party, where they had a candidates forum, where uh, uh, I spoke as the uh, candidate running for borough president. So if you don't know, I'm running to be the next borough president of Manhattan. And I hope to have the endorsement of this club. Uh, why? You may ask me, why do you want the endorsement of this club? Well, ideally, I want the endorsement of every Democratic club in New York County. And I want the endorsement of every individual. But this is important to me uh, because one, you're a Democratic club, and number two, because you're the first Muslim Democratic club in New York, and I'm a Muslim. And I'm not asking you to vote for me because I'm a Muslim. I'm asking you to vote for me because I'm the best candidate to do the job to be the next borough president of Manhattan. And in fact, I was down in Washington, D.C. yesterday at the Will Joe Wilson Center at uh, 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 American Muslim local elected officials. And there was a forum where there were three mayors that are Muslim in the United States that, that happened to be there. Uh, two judges, one from Michigan and one from California, and myself. And they asked us questions like, well, how did you get involved in the electoral process to be elected? Uh, what does it feel like to be an elected public official as a Muslim? What is the most positive or negative thing that you, you know, run into? And I said to them that I did not run uh, as a Muslim. I ran as a Democrat. I ran as a parent. I ran as an activist. And my religion has never come up as an issue in my elections. And some people say to me, well, your name is Robert Jackson. That's not a Muslim name. And I says, really? I thought a name is a name. And so my name is Robert Jackson. And they say, some people say, well, you don't look like a Muslim. And I said, really? What does a Muslim look like? Looks like everybody on the, the, the planet Earth. And you should know that. But some of the things that you should be fighting for is the democratic principles of your right to select your representatives. And to build the power base as Democrats in New York who happen to be Muslims so that you we can exercise our our authority as a body, as a, as, a, as a Democratic Club of New York, to endorse and support candidates that fight for the issues and concerns that we have. So what are some of the major issues in New York City right now? You know, I took a survey of my constituents in Northern Manhattan, and you know what they came back? Jobs, affordable housing, health care, education, immigration reform, police issues, and so, if you look at from a historical perspective on some of the issues of concerns, as you know, the whole resolution on uh, uh, incorporating Muslim holidays into the New York City school calendar, I was the lead, uh, I was the lead council member on that. 
uh, and I carried it through the Education Committee, and it was passed as a resolution unanimously by the an expression and will of the body. And so hopefully, hopefully we will have the next mayor that will incorporate our holidays into the school calendar. Uh, so I say to all of you, uh, stay united. Do not allow anyone to divide us. And when you're involved in any club or organization, know the rules of the game so that you will be able to advocate from a position of strength and not be used in the process. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, thank you everybody for coming. My name is Ali Najmi. I'm, I'm so happy to be here and I'm so excited by the crowd that we have tonight. I mean, this is really something. Uh, it's so great to see such a great young and mixed crowd of uh, people from all over the city uh, that are really committed to making change uh, for the Muslim community and for all of New York. So we're, Linda and I are going to present a little bit of information to you about voter data and how and how big is the Muslim vote, where is it, where is it spread out, where is it most dense. I think these are really important things for us to know because as a club, we want to organize the Muslim community. So where does the Muslim community live? So here's a map of all the council districts. There are 51 council districts in the city of New York. This map is concentrated right now really on Brooklyn and Queens. Who wants to guess which city council district has the most registered Muslim American voters? I want to, give me, you can give me a neighborhood if you don't know the uh, exact council. Flatbush, Arroyo, Queens, Jamaica, Harlem. Astoria. Yeah, okay, see the, there are a lot of guesses. They're all wrong. <laughs> They're all wrong. This is why data analysis is so important and critical. In politics, you're only as good as your data. And all the broken people. I know Sal Albanese thinks Bay Ridge has the most Muslims. I know Linda did too at one point. But guess what? Guess where it is? Oh, Eastern Queens, where I grew up in my home district of Glen Oaks, Fuller Park, Council District 23. That's the most. That's number one. We have um, about 6,500 registered Muslim American voters, according to our data. And Linda's going to tell you a little bit how we calculated that data later, but that's number one. Who wants to ask? Who gets number two? Bronx. Jackson Heights. Cool. Astoria. Astoria. Okay. All right, you guys are close. Definitely it's in Queens. Queens is in the house. I know, I see a lot of Queens people. Actually, the second most... And I see a lot of people who live in this district. It's Council District 24, Jamaica, Queens. People I know, there are a lot of brothers here and sisters from the Jamaica Muslim Center. That's based in this district. It's about almost as much as, as uh, Council District 23. In Council District 24, we have just under 6,500 registered Muslim American voters. All right, number three, we heard it a couple of times. It is Astoria coming in. Queens is big enough. <laughs> little Brooklyn Queens rivalry here. Um, and number four, not to be missed, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Woo! Bay Ridge. Huge Arab community in Bay Ridge. And finally, we have what is really supposed to be uh, the Sunny Side area. I don't think we could get a smaller uh, circle there. That orange sliver right there. Uh, I like to call this. The top part of the Muslim belt of New York, because that's where all the most are. <laughs> but this is the density. This is where the density is. These are the top council districts that have the most Muslim American voters in New York City. That doesn't mean that there aren't there aren't buildings in Manhattan that have maybe, you know, lots of voters for us to organize. Or that there isn't a huge Muslim American community of West Africans in the Bronx that we need to organize. Or that there isn't an African American community in Bedside that we want to be a part of. Or Staten Island. Or Staten Island. Um, but this is just the density. So just so you know, and as a club, when we're talking about citywide elections and we're talking about really moving the vote citywide, this is where we need to concentrate. And that's what we found out from our data. 
I want to hand it over to Linda to talk about the next part. Thank you, Ali. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> How's yeah! everybody doing tonight? Okay. So, uh, it's not just about how many registered voters, because you could have the most. It's about how many of them actually go to the polls. So if we wanted to go back to that data, I think the Bay Ridge folks would be on the top. But that's another, that's another, thing, that's another presentation. So according to our data, which is based on a Muslim surname list, and it also uh, overlaps a little bit with Middle Eastern names. So for example, many Arabs don't have Muslim last names, and I'm a great example of that. So my last name is Sarsu, that is not a Muslim last name, it is an Arab last name, but I am Muslim. So we born in Turkish, uh, Bosnian, Albanian, some Arab surnames, um, and, uh, and, and Afghani, Pakistanis, and, and a general Muslim surname list that already exists and that we've built together with uh, Faiza Ali and some interns and folks that helped us in the community. So we rounded off the numbers. There's 105,000 registered Muslim voters in New York City. 105,000 registered voters, guys. what it means to have 105,000 registered voters. Se according to the numbers, 70% of all our registered voters are registered Democrats. Who wants to do math? Who wants to do math? Don't worry, we're already in math for you. 73,500 voters. Get that number up. Yep, yep, we're gonna talk about that in a second. 73,500. And the star on the bottom is what I just talked about that includes some Middle Eastern surnames um, uh, that were combined with our Muslim surname list. Here's the middle line, okay. So, let's imagine that the Muslim community went out 100% on the primary. So imagine 73,500 Muslims went out to the polls. That would mean, hypothetically speaking, we would be 10% of the electorate in New York City. So think about that. The Muslim community would be 10% of the, of the primary electorate. Citywide. Citywide. These numbers are citywide. That's big. It doesn't sound big, but that's big. 10% citywide. We're going to give you an example of that. Don't we have a slide? We have a next slide. So let's give you an example of a primary race that happened in 2009. The election results in the primary. So these guys were all running on a Democratic ticket, right? So you had Weprin, Friedrich, and Singh, right? 4,300 people, 4,300 votes got Weprin the nomination for the Democratic ticket, right? The total number of Muslim registered voters in that district is 6,500. So think about that. 6,500 registered Muslim voters Weprin got 4,300 votes. Imagine what that 6,500 could do in a race like that. So what that shows us is that in multiple districts that we showed you, particularly those five districts that we put up there, the four in Queens and the one in South Brooklyn, we are swing voters in many of the races happening in the city council level. According to a guy who is known to be a political encyclopedia in New York, his name is Jerry Skernick, from, he owns a company called Prime New York, we know that in the 60s and the 70s, up until the early 80s, the turnout for a Democratic primary was 700,000. In recent years and around the Koch time, it went down 500,000 and less. Why? Because there was no, sometimes there was no primary and there wasn't really a competitive race. Who was running against Bloomberg, right? So now we're back, to back, we're back to the 60s and the 70s. So we believe, based on history, that this time around, the turnout is gonna be around 700,000, right? And even if we were 5% of the electorate, we could be a swing voter on the citywide level and guaranteed swing voters in specific districts in the city council. So what we're saying here today is this is what the already exists now, right? Imagine that we don't have a citywide mechanism to organ organize our community in a partisan manner. So this is why you're here today. This is why we have the Democratic Club. And what we want from all of you today is a couple of things. The first thing is, the easiest thing is to become a member of our club. 
We want you to be a member because you can vote on endorsements of our club, you can vote on the direction, you can vote on the budget and how we move forward with our project. So if you want to be a part of that and you want to have a voice in that, you have to be a member of our club. The way we're going to organize is we're going to organize by borough. There are people here. Who's here from Queens? Woo! Who's here from Brooklyn? Woo! Manhattan? Yay! Oh, sorry. Uh, the Bronx? We got any Bronx people here? No. Not bad. Staten Island? Any Staten Island? Yay! Yay! All right, so we're, you know, we're good. Listen, so what we want to do is we want to build field operations by borough. Why? Because the people of the borough know the borough best. I'm not going to come organizing Queens because I'm not a Queens girl. I probably will, but I'm not a good example. Um, so if you're from a particular neighborhood, we're on Facebook. Very easy. The Muslim Democratic Club of New York. There isn't anyone else like us. We're on, we're on Facebook. Like our page. Tell your friends to like our page. We're going to keep updating it during the election so you have up-to-date, timely information on what's going on. We're also on Twitter, MDCNY. So just follow us on Twitter um, and also hashtag MDCNY and Muslim Vote is a lot of the information that we're putting out. So before you leave here today, we want you to become a member of our club. In the next couple of months, we'll be meeting and we'll be preparing our club to make endorsements for a public advocate, comptroller, the different borough presidents, and we need your voice in that because it's not about what I think, it's not about what Ali thinks or what Zeba thinks, it's about what we think as a community. And we want to grow this club and we, be, we believe in our potential moving forward. So is everybody down? Yeah. Guys, come on, there's cameras here. Is everybody down? Yeah. So, we are ready to build the political power of our community. Many people around uh, here have already been doing that, and we're just trying to bring it to the next level. And we need each and every one of you. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for following our presentation. Um, do you want to do the same one? So we have a couple of folks here that we just want to recognize. We have Charles Jack. Oh, no, that's our Charles Jackson. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, uh, uh, no, this is a different action chart. Charles Jackson, J Charles P. Jackson with Congresswoman Women, Yvette Clark's office. Yay. We have a friend of our communities, Jamila Joseph, Deputy Chief of Staff of Bill de Blasio. Uh, a member of our community and a friend of our community, uh, uh, Sesson Adams with the Comptroller's office. Yay, Yay Sesson. Um, and we also have David Ng, Chief of Staff for Nelly Rosick, Assemblywoman from the 25th District. So thank you for all the candidates, for all the folks that are here, the media that are here, and I'm going to give the floor back to Zeba. So um, thank you very much, Linda and Ali. I mean, this is just a very small snippet of the data that is out there and that we can all look at and analyze. You know, every time um, I talk to people about voting, whether it's the general or the local, people say, my vote doesn't count. You know, people say, New York is a blue state, my vote New York is a blue city, my vote doesn't count. I think this, this little presentation showed you that your vote does count, and I would dare say that there are other uh, districts out there where the races were much tighter and it was not 1,000 votes, it was 500 votes. You know, and so I think that if you don't live in these districts, but you know people in these districts, you need to tell them that they need to register um, to vote for the primary, they need to register as Democratic voters. Um, but I also think that um, a lot of you, I'm sure, don't live in the districts that we're focusing on, you know, so, uh, um, and they may not be, you, you need to vote in the primary for sure, but we need other help from you. We need, we need more people to get on board, we need more members. Um, one of the benefits of membership is that you can endorse candidates and you can also vote. Um, and you can get involved, and we're just eight, I, I introduced you to the eight or nine people that brought this event together. So I really ask you to come forward. This is just the very, very beginning, um, and we're open to questions. We would love to talk to you more. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. We're going to do a question and answer right now, so are there any questions? Uh, so, obviously, the, 
you're a big part of the uh, primary electorate, how do you actually plan to you know, get the vote out? You know, you, you can talk about these numbers, but actually pulling these people to the polls in a primary is pretty good effect. So, I mean, and that's why we were very specific in saying that we're going to focus on key race, select key races. Okay. You know, there may be five districts where Muslims are a large portion of the population. We may only focus on three of those. I mean, I'm just saying, we'll have to be very specific in choosing the, the races that we um, go, that we're part of at the borough and uh, at the borough level. But, um, you know, we're going to be, we have a budget. And on the ground and having a round for voter education and voter persuasion and get out the vote. Um, and I don't know if Linda or Ali wants to add more. I mean, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to knock on doors. We're going to knock on a lot of doors. I don't even think you realize how many doors we're going to knock on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to phone bank, and we're going to be in the mustards. We're going to be in community centers. We're going to be on the Hillside Avenue. We're going to be on other main thoroughfares and other areas. <laughs> I, what's the most popular street in Bay Ridge? Fifth Ave. We're going to be on Fifth Ave, Third Ave in Brooklyn. We're going to be we're going to be creating a buzz. We're going to be working with the ethnic media. The ethnic media is a huge part of our effort. We're going to be working, and, there, and I'm so happy to see members of the ethnic media here. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a media operation, but it's going to be a real on-the-ground poll. Um, are there going to be full-time staff with this club, or how do you, I mean, because I know all of you probably have full-time jobs. <laughs> So as uh, Zeba spoke about, we're um, going to be in a fundraising process probably within the next four to six weeks. We will have full-time staff in each of the boroughs, uh, but we will also have volunteer bases of people, young people who want to build their resumes, uh, people who we have already worked with on campaigns in the past. So we actually, some of us have already done this, we're going to have a database that already exists, just kind of getting those people to be official members of this club, <laughs> including volunteering time. If they can't pay the $25, allowing them to use their volunteer time <coughs> to members of the club. So. That's something that's going to be worked out in the next four weeks, but uh, we're definitely ready to for our ground operations. And, and we're going to be focusing right now um, just based on the timing that we're in. And I, I, I think it's more it makes more sense for us right now to work on two districts where we can really have a heavy ground game and create that as a pilot opportunity for the 2012 um, election, uh, 2014 elections and then the next city council. So the more focused we are, I think the better uh, impact we'll have um, on future elections. So it's kind of like we're in the pilot and, and we're ready to do that. Which two districts? We're, we're still, I'm tr still trying to negotiate. We're still fighting, no, I'm just kidding. Well, I think that's going to be a process that our, the members of the club are going to guide us with. I know there's More numbers, which is right now, these are the numbers we gave you, our preliminary numbers. So we're negotiating based on the numbers, based on the resources, and based on what volunteer base we get, right? If we get a lot of Queens people, that's going to make more sense for us to work districts in Queens. If we get big, a, a big Brooklyn turnout, then we'll do Brooklyn. What about if we get a whole bunch of Bronx people, and we don't get a lot of Brooklyn people, then we're going to do the Bronx. I think it's about manpower, it's about the will of the club and the members, and it's also about the that we'll have. I just want to add, you know, there was a question about staff. Every Democratic club in this city is built on volunteers. But the question should be, how many volunteers are we going to have? That's the most important question. Ozzy. Uh, on what issues are you going to, or do you think the club is going to decide which candidates to support, which candidates to oppose, and what, what's the metrics by which you're going to evaluate candidates for officers? So we're a, a Muslim Democratic Club in New York, so we're a domestic policies, local issues, and you know our top two issues. Our top two issues are NYPD surveillance of the Muslim community. We want candidates to be straight, take that straight on. And we also want to talk about uh, uh, Muslim school holidays and access to education um, and civil rights issues. So those are our main issues that we're looking at. Um, and obviously there are issues of health care, but those are the two main issues that we hear already on Twitter, on Facebook, from our community, and the centers that we work for, as you know, many of us are in the grassroots community. So those are going to be our two uh, big issues in the usual health care, immigration. <laughs> Any plans to um, train candidates for future public office? That's a great idea. I think um, I think that's a great long-term goal that you know the membership will decide on. I think for 2013, we want to get out the vote from everybody from our community. 
in the, well, that's the in, in the in the West Bronx, a number of West African Muslims are planning to run for city council, and I think there are like three or four of them that are planning on running. Um, any any thoughts about uh, their efforts and what you want to do in, in the Bronx? I think that we would love to do more in the Bronx, and I think that the best thing about those candidacies is that they're going to bring out those communities, and those are communities we really want to be a part of. Um, the Arab, the, I'm sorry, the Muslim American community is a pretty young community population-wise. There are a lot of young people in it, so do you guys have any specific initiatives for getting young people to vote? Because <coughs> I, I know this one's a bold young man. Um, as you look around the room, um, we do have a diversity of age, but there's a very uh, focus on the young professional communities, people who have full-time jobs, who can't be you know, grassroots organizers like some of us are, but have something to contribute, um, including their, their, first of all, their vote, uh, potentially some financial resources, and maybe some volunteer time on the, on the weekend. Because we're on Twitter, because we're on uh, Facebook, I think that's another opportunity to kind of bring in this kind of generation and trying to have meetings that are at a time that's convenient for people and using online communications, I think is gonna help us to Right? So we have African American Muslims that have been in the city for forever. Um, what we're doing is we're just trying to coordinate and organize our community. Not to say that we're a new community on the ground because we're not. And there have been many people that have done many things for our community before, including people like Councilmember Bob Jackson, who's a Muslim in our community that's you know born and bred, and he's been here and he's been doing things. So we're not new. We're just trying to bring our community together, organize, empower, educate, engage. I'm um, in a way that we really haven't done before. So thank you. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Ali, you know, uh, there are more than two uh, candidates who are running for mayor, and I was wondering, only two showed up here. Did you invite only two, or did you invite all of them, and the rest did not show up? <laughs> no, we invited everybody. Uh, we had representatives from the campaign. Uh, Chris, Christine Quinn's campaign manager was here earlier, and Christine Quinn has uh, congratulated us and, and sent her campaign manager. I know we have somebody from Bill de Blasio's staff. So, but uh, so we and, and I think there might be other staff, but everybody was invited. Hmm. Good. How do we go beyond the South Asian and Arab communities? I feel like even if you look at the demographic of this room, that seems to be the predominant population here. But how do you engage the African American community, the convert communities, the Hispanic, the Latino communities? Like, what steps do you take to break through, like the traditional, like I guess, groups and people guys? We need to we need to find the organizers from those communities to join our group. And, you know, I'm very proud to have uh, Susie Lasada here, who is uh, a Latina Muslim, Muslimina from the Bronx. And, you know, we're going to look to her for guidance on how to organize Latina Muslims. And if, I think we got to get, we have to diversify our membership. Our membership is going to guide this club. If we have no West African members from the Bronx, guess where we're not going to be? If we have a lot of South Asian members from Queens, guess where we're going to be? If we have a lot of Arab members from Brooklyn, so it's going to be guided by the membership. We have to recruit those members, we have to reach out to them, and that's a goal of ours. And, and this is a launch event, so this is the start of it, right? So it always starts with the people that are in it, right? So we start here. Actually, I just had this conversation today with Abdel Ahmed, who's here too, who's an organizer as well, about bringing in some of the WD Muhammad uh, community, who are also young people that we know and bring them into this, uh, to this realm. So that's the outreach that we're doing, that's a part of the field operation, right? Outreach to other leaders, outreach to other communities, and go out into other boroughs where we're not necessarily present. So that's the goal of the club. So these are the types of concerns or the types of suggestions that we want to hear from the membership. So if you weren't here, nobody would have brought that up, right? So that's why we want your membership. We want you to stay connected to us. Please make sure you register before you leave here today. So. 
without uh, further ado, and if you want to, any more questions, feel free to speak to Zeba, to uh, Omer, to me, to, to Ali, to Alia, to Faiza, feel free to ask us any questions. Um, and somebody brought up about candidates from our community. I think that there is an upcoming generation of our community that's interested in running for public office. We're trying to do the, lay the groundwork, but there are already people that have taken that initiative. Um, and I want to introduce one of them uh, today to you now. Um, our friend, our colleague, uh, someone who's from the community, someone who's worked with us on all the issues that we talked about today. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Ziad Ramadan, New York City Council candidate for District 7. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. It, it's really, really cold out, but I wore a flowery tie because it's a really happy day. Just like Robert said, it's a long time coming. And like many of you and like many of your families, I'm an immigrant who came to this country. And it's funny, I picked up this napkin and I thought about the first time I saw it in October of 1971 when I was five years old. And I was walking through the airport at JFK and thought I was in this giant new dream. And I think that the dream for my family, uh, who were refugees and my parents were illiterate, is uh, really uh, becoming a reality uh, for me. I'm running for the council in the 7th district, not to prove any kinds of point, not because I'm just an Arab. I've served my community for 15 years pro bono. I've been the former chair of the community board. I've been on the community board for 15 years. I created an arts organization. I'm the co-founder of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. We just won the National Endowment of the Arts Award, three Union Square Awards. These are things that I worked for and I gave back to my community because it gave me everything as an American Muslim, Arab. And I gotta tell you that I'm incredibly excited. We had Professor Tarek Ramadan just a couple of weeks ago speak on the transformations of Malcolm X. Those are the kind of things that are really special uh, to our community, but nonetheless, they're services to our community. And I just wanted to say that I'm a candidate for the seventh district. I'm one of the leading candidates, and inshallah, we'll have our first, uh, our second Muslim uh, council member in the city of New York. And I look forward to working with as many um, young people to make sure that we can have many, many more people in, in, in government. We are nearing three, I think we're three quarters of a million to a million people in New York City. We don't have enough representation and we need a lot more representation. So this is the kind of organization that will help us get there. Thank you very much, everybody.